I'm Valerie Kelso and as you can see I haven't got one piece I've got two and trust me this is going to be an amazing show but before I get into the show I want to just mention a little bit about our t-shirts as you can see I didn't wear it today because I didn't want to sing you know what I mean you already heard me sing on Facebook and some of you have turned around and told me that you'll donate money to me to stop singing so I didn't want to sing today <coughs> but this is our t-shirt for our run, walk and support. Saturday at 8 o'clock, you do not have to buy a t-shirt to come out, you can just come out and just enjoy being around like-minded people who have gone through some form of trauma to let you know you are not on your own. It's called run, walk and support because we want to reach them while they are young. So nobody never walks into a domestic violence relationship that the end result that they might even end up with cancer. That's why it's called Run, Walk and Support. So I would like to see each and every one of you out Saturday morning at 8 a.m. at Chisholm Park, Hearst, Texas. Come out and just enjoy. We've got Levine Masters, we've got Alicia, we've got Sam, we've got poetry. We're going to have a good time Saturday morning. So once again, please come out and support. So now I am going to let you I'm going to introduce that. Well, I'm not going to introduce them because one of them's got a name that I can't pronounce. And you know, I'm Valerie Kelso, I likes to butcher people's names. But this is Sherlina, and I know I've got her name right because I had to pin it in my brain. And her wonderful son, Christian. I bet you thought I was going to say her boyfriend, didn't you? Well, you're all right. <laughs> right? It's her son, Christian. And they are going to share their story and their journey with us, right? So, Tell the people a little bit about yourself and then we'll introduce your son because the mother always comes before the son. Yes, right. Okay, so I am Sherlina, you said it exactly right. I did. So, yeah, absolutely. Yes, <laughs> yes. And um, I am an author now, so I have a book that's coming out. It's called Fingertips, a Mother Story of Faith, Anger, and Resilience. Mm -hmm. um, uh, resiliency, I'm sorry. And the book itself talks about when my son here, Christian, was shot in the head at 13, point blank range, with a 38 caliber pistol, while spending the night at a friend's home. So Christian, this was not one of those acts of, um, it was a violent act, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't as though they were having an altercation. It was a, it was a, a I won't even say it was an accident. Someone just kind of took, took my son's life into their own hands and decided to play with it. So um, when Christian was shot, like I said, point blank range, um, it just sent us on a, on a, on a journey. And, and the journey still, it, it's still here. You know, we still deal with it every day. We deal with, with what he's gone through. So that was in 2005. Of course, now here it is, what, 17 years later, nearly 17 years later. He was shot uh, December the 18th. Um, he came out of ICU on Christmas Day. So the hospital called him a Christmas miracle. Well, look at his name. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. and, it, and, it, and to be honest with you, I've, I've always thought ever since it happened, my daughter's name is Serenity. So, and she comes out, comes after Christian, right? And back then I was not a faith-based person. Mm -hmm. I'll just be honest with you there. All those things are in yes. the book. I feel as though this is, was something that we were supposed to tell. Yeah. By his name, by her name, the story happening, him surviving, all this was ordained by God. So now is our time to tell the story and help whomever we can with what happened with us and, and the steps that we took. And, and things like that. Thirteen. 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 I'm surprised. I thought he was he was gonna tell me that it was like probably five, six years ago, mm -hmm. not at the age of thirteen. 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 So God had a story for you to tell. And it took me a long time to tell it. It was one of those things where you just kinda once you get over it per se you just want to bury it and, and move forward and go on with a normal life um christian though he he started speaking to kids about gun safety mm -hmm. he got into the schools 
things like that. It wasn't until I had another situation that God brought me back. You know, he has a way of bringing you back to he remind does. you of how, how good he is. So, so Christian, I need yes. to know a little bit from you. Yes. So, so what was that? What, how did everything come about? Everything come about. Um, so, my name is Christian. Um, I am the, the, the son of uh, Miss Shirlena, Miss Shirlena, <laughs> right? Uh, so when, after um, I got shot, you know, I, 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 I went into a, a deep depression. Deep depression, and um, I got out of that depression, and I started speaking to kids. Uh -huh. um, what was so significant for me is um, the December 18, 2005 was the day I got shot. Yeah. And so December 18, 2015, I gave my first 10-year speech. Uh, it was a 10-year anniversary. Mm -hmm. It was the, because I got shot over the winter break. And so um, it was the Friday before the winter break for the kids. So I left them with an impactful message. Uh, the message was, you know, you know, if you see a gun, you know, tell somebody right away. Um, don't play with guns. Don't leave guns unsecured. Um, just, just stay safe. And um, I was trying to, you know, make an impact. Well, I am making an impact, but I wanted to make more of an impact. So I, I released a clothing brand. I released a clothing brand for, um, you know, I started off with T-shirts because yeah. I, 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 you know, I thought that was what everybody does, uh, what everybody did. Uh, so. It, it wasn't until about like two years later, it's like 2017, and I started with hats. I started, I started with hats, and um, it was because of I just recently I had locks just like that, you know, because I was trying to be like my grandfather. Okay. Uh, so I was, you know, I was battling that, and when I cut my locks, because I got tired of everybody in high school asking me, "Hey, what happened to you?" And you know that that gets tiring answering back and forth, back and forth. And so um, I cut I cut my locks, and I'm like, wow, I shouldn't have done that because now I have this big scar in my head. That's what I was going to ask you. So where was you shot? Because of yeah, I was shot right here, mm -hmm. and it went through it went through to the back of my of my skull. So he um, actually has a knot right here yeah, where the I have bullet a, tried to come out. Right. Oh, wow. So yeah. you could feel screws, all you know, you could feel two screws, and I have a, a metal well not metal plate, but I have a plate the size of my hand actually. Um That's so hard. so I um I started with hats. You know, my girlfriend was like, Hey, you should start selling hats, you're passionate about it. And I'm like no, I started selling, you know, I keep selling shirts because I, I didn't think anybody would buy my, you know, my hats because they, they weren't the thing to sell, you know. Um, but I was just stuck with my passion and, you know, she put a hat on, she put one of my hats on and it was just... So that's one of your hats that you yes. put on your head? Yes, yes. We're nothing, I like nothing else. Review Revive. 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 Yeah, Revive Minds. My, yes. my brand is called Revive Minds. It means, you know, a lot to me. It's changed the way you think, reverse the way you live. That is my motto. So I start to put affirmations in all the hats. So what's the affirmation in that one? It's the staple. Change the way you think, reverse the way you live. <laughs> you see? Yes. So. Did you hear what he just said? He makes <laughs> hats on his head. And each one of them has got a statement in it mm -hmm. because it's all about your mind. Mm -hmm. It's about your mind and changing and renewing of the mind. Yes, it is. So, mm -hmm. reviving the mind. You, you know what I'm saying? And that's why we call our show Don't Believe the Hype. It's, it's, right. it's not about believing the, the lies that people feed right. you. Right. So, I know you said he was in a, you said he was in a coma and he came out. Um, the guy that shot you, did anything ever happen? Or oh, I don't even know if it's a guy, it could have been a woman for all I may know. Yeah, the, the guy that shot me, um, he didn't go to jail for shooting me. I don't know what, you know, I, I know, but he he just, he 
he moved to Kansas, I do believe, and he got into some trouble there. And that was the last thing I heard from him. Basically, we just once, and, and it's all in the book, but once yeah. God restored Christian, kind of put us back on solid ground, mm -hmm. we had to let that go because it, was, it, it, yes. it, it would have caused more harm to us. Yeah. You know, when somebody does harm to someone, God will take care That's of right. it. Oh, yeah. It might not be today, it might not be next week, but He yeah. will take care of it. Yes. And you can't, you can't run from God. Mm -hmm. You can't hide from God. Mm -hmm. You being here and staying and, and still alive, that's a testament within itself yes. that God wasn't ready for you to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, no matter what that guy did, he's always going to be thinking, look at what I did. Mm -hmm. He's the one who's got to put out that troubled mind. Right. Not you. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Yes, I see where you're going with it. So... Yeah, you have to let things go because you don't want things to eat away at you. Because when it does, it, it troubles your mind. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's why I like yes. your brand. Well, thank you. I really do. <laughs> I just love how everything goes back mm -hmm. to the mind. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, what was it like for you and um, watching him with emotion? Um, go through what he had to go through because I'm sure the rehab and everything had to take place. Yes. Well, <clears throat> Christian um, was in a medically induced coma um, and, and like I've said, he came out of the coma on Christmas Day. That was already a miracle. So the nurses were coming up to see him. He actually started to um, he talked again that night. The first, his first name, his first word was serenity. So that, of course, reminded me of the serenity prayer. Yes, and I, of course, prayers. couldn't change what had happened to him. Mm -hmm. But, of course, the outlook could be more positive if I just made sure that my mind was intact. So our journey from there, um, he just, once he, once he could, because they told me, I, I skipped that, they told me that he may not walk again. That night, Christmas night, he got out of bed. He got out of bed and started walking. It's, in the, it's also in the book. He got out of bed and started walking. So on his own, and I, I was asleep. So that was one of those things where, wow, you know. So not only could he, he had already said serenity, so not only could he talk, but God showed me that he could walk on Christmas night. So we just had to go from there. And from there, he just took off. He, he was so determined. Um, he had to get his motor skills back, of course, learn how to do simple tasks that we don't yeah. even think about. Button up the shirt, pop a Coke can. I mean, walking was a challenge. Catching a ball was a challenge. But he, frustration was there at first. But then determination took over. And we were out of there in 23 days. 25 days. So let me ask you a question because yeah. I can keep going back to your mm -hmm. mind and your mind and your mind and mm -hmm. your mind. What made you come up with your brand name? Uh, so, i never forget we were at a, me and my girlfriend, we were uh, in, living in Atlanta at the time and we went to a, a Chili's or an Applebee's. I can't remember which one, but I knew I just got the sampler. And <laughs> so, you got the sampler. I got the sampler, <laughs> yeah. I always remember what he had. Always. So, um, you know, I, I knew I wanted to start a t-shirt brand, mm -hmm. right? And I, uh, and I knew I wanted to call it Minds because I wanted, you know, I got shot in the head. So yeah. I knew I wanted to affect the brain. I know I wanted to affect, um, I just couldn't put it together at first. But I know I wanted to restore it and renew it. And I'm just thinking about, okay, I'm Googling, okay, renew at, um, synonyms, you know, mm -hmm. um, words that are similar. And I just came up with revive, and it was the greatest definition, you know, to restore, um, revive, the the and, and make and make like new. Yeah. So I I wanted to pursue mm -hmm. that, and that's where it came from. And that's your logo on your top. Yes, <laughs> it's one of them. Yes, yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's two different. Oh, is that the is that the logo itself, or because your hat and your logo? Yeah, this, your this this is the R is what I'm most known for, 
as as a logo. But we we, we branch off and do um, a similar logos, but it's all pertaining to one thing. And they have affirmation hats as yeah, well. Hats. So you do you still do t-shirts as well? Yes, I do. So you do t-shirts as well as hats. Mm -hmm. So is that a t-shirt that you've got under your clothes or? No, this is. Yeah, oh no 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 no! So, it's a white t-shirt. Oh come on! No. You're coming on the show. <laughs> <laughs> but but I want I want these these are for sale. Okay. These are for sale. And um, where could people buy? Uh, www.revivemines. That's going to be R E V I V E M I N D S. Always got to spell it out. Dot com. Did you get that, Miss Jimmy? <laughs> if anybody want to ask Christian a question or Miss Shirlina, feel free to ask them a question because, as you know, I mean, this is live. So any bloopers, anything that goes on, it's natural. So, you know, I mean, that's why I don't want to do a show where I have to tape it because I just want people right. to see authentic people come right. onto the show. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, Shirlina and Christian, what do you want people to get from your story? The main thing I want um, to get across, even with the book, is that life is going to shoot you things. You know, life is going to take you fast. Life can do many things, but faith, as long as you keep the no, I shouldn't say as long as you keep the faith. It has to be in the forefront of everything. Mm. Distractions will come. And during our journey, during my journey, because um, even when he was in the coma, you have to just maintain your focus on God and what he will have for you. I think that a lot of people get so distracted with what the world will bring or what other people want to say and things like that. When Christian, before Christian could tell me what happened to him, I did not speculate. I didn't ask anybody. It was not my focus. The only thing I was focused on was praying him back to health. And I felt like the whole world was praying for him. And that's what we need. We yeah. need to tell people. We need to open it up. We need everyone to start praying together. But right now, I tell people, I pray for the whole world all day. Everybody. Everybody. It doesn't matter who you are. I'm praying for you. And um, it makes a huge difference. It makes a difference in my heart. And I can go throughout the day knowing that I pray for everybody. And I'm sure it makes a difference in other people's lives. So, so Christian, what's your faith like now? Um, so if I can give out one message, it'll be just I'm trying to affect the youth. I'm trying, I'm trying to touch that that one. If, if like when I give a, a speak, okay. speaking engagement, if I just touch one person, I've done my job with that. Yeah. Um, and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to sell these hats with affirmations in them because we always need affirmations to keep us going, to keep us in the right mood, to keep us in on the right path. So, um, and I'm just trying to impact everybody that I can, all the youth that I can, because I know it's hard growing up and they're battling which way they want to go with life. So I'm just trying to be a voice to lead them in the right direction. So earlier on you said that um, you didn't really have a fake life. Did it come because of Christian, but what Christian had to go through? Because I mean, at 11, he was only 11. He's probably what, your first child? He is my first child, yes. He was, he was 13, he's 30 now. Um, when I say I didn't have, now I always believed in God. Yeah, we all do, but right. you know, we just depends right. on that, that level. Yeah. So I had gone through a lot of things, though, prior to this happening. So I was in and out of, you know how you're in yeah. and out of religion and Christian and uh, Christian faith, you know, and, and your base is not always there. It became more consistent, you know. It's, uh, it, yeah, it had to become more consistent. God showed me who he was. He, you know, like they say, show up and show out. That's exactly what he did. So, of course, I had to remain in in um, in his good graces because of what he had done for me. For me, I'm looking at Christian, and Christian's got to be at least six foot, right? Mm -hmm. And you've got to be at least five foot, right? Five foot and so, okay? And he's yeah. got to be, you know what I mean? He's my natural son. I know. You know I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm thinking <laughs> because my daughter's oh, six foot. Oh. You know what I mean? So my daughter and my grandkids, one of them is 
in my eyes, mm -hmm. and the other two, one six foot one, and my daughter is six foot. So mm -hmm. what I'm just thinking about, mm -hmm. Christian had to go through all that, but you had to bathe him, you had to do so much things. I know he probably wasn't as tall as he was now. It must right. have been a struggle for you, <laughs> carrying a big guy like this, you know what I'm saying? Because... Believe it or not, I never You need had a massage? <laughs> Believe it or not, I never had to carry him. Oh, you didn't? I didn't. He, one time, he got frustrated in the hospital. One time, he got frustrated in the shower. And I, I had to come in then. Other than that, he wouldn't allow it. He just would not allow it. He just wanted to get back. He was yeah, he was very determined. Right. He would use his walker. He would use the wall. He would use everything. One time, he got, fr he got frustrated in the shower. And I had to go in and help him. And I saw it on his face. And um, the next time it was time for a shower, he, no, I got it. So that was his determination. I didn't have to care. So how long after all, after all this, and you said he was in hospital for how many days? 23. 23. By the, by the time, they only let him come out of the hospital because he could walk from the bottom to the top floor of the hospital. And it was, what, 19 floors? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I took a chew test. I had to learn how to chew with me. Swallow, Swallow test. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, when I passed that, you know, it, it was. They didn't think he would pass. I was about to say, when they saw you, with him, <laughs> from what you showed us, with your brain mm -hmm. out, bullet in your head. Did they expect him to leave? They didn't. They never. They never did. Everything was when his head started. Um, when his brain started pushing up against his skull, because at first they wanted to leave the bullet in, mm -hmm. when it started pressing up against his skull, they came and said it's causing too much damage, um, nerve damage. The nerves are pressing up against the skull, so we're going to have to have emergency surgery. That's when they cut him open and took about this much of his skull out. There are pictures on his site about that as well. So he has about this much gone. They removed the bullet thin. Keep in mind now, there's a bulge. We have the replica of his skull. There's a bulge back here. When I asked the doctor, you know, kind of how, you know, because he said if it had gone through, he would have died instantly. We don't know what happened. They said, but the, his hairline stopped the bullet. And we all know that hairline is his skin. So we all know that that wasn't true. God stopped the bullet right. and for this moment right here. But, um, yeah, so he had to walk. He had to walk from, the, and it, and they didn't think so. So he, he asked for a swallow test because he wanted his Nana's cooking for New Year's. Uh -huh. He overheard her talking about whatever <laughs> she was going to cook. Because I never loved it. Right. <laughs> That's it. And he loves to eat now. Yeah. So, uh, uh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and and they asked, and so I asked, could he get off of the hospital food? Actually, it was the it was the feeding, it was the, tube. The feeding tube. Yeah. So we went straight from the feeding tube to a swallow test. They didn't think he was going to pass. He passed. They were just like, that's when they started coming in. What Nurses were coming in saying, I just got to lay my eyes on him. Yeah. I just, we've never heard a story like this before. They called him the Christmas miracle. Yeah. Well, you yeah. know. Price, Christian, right. mm -hmm. God had a purpose for mm -hmm. it. Yes, absolutely. And obviously you've got two tattoos and you mentioned that you wanted to be like your... My grandfather. Your grandfather? Yes, yes. Yeah, um, they passed away kind of two weeks apart. Um, and, you know, I just had to commem commemorate them with the, with the tattoo as best as, you know, as I could. So. That's I knew how, because I wanted to look at them every day. Your grandfather looked like saying he was some speaky dresser. Oh, yeah, him yeah. and my mom. Yes, my mom. yes. You know, the two of them? Yes. yes. You know what I mean? Both is, of them. Is that an actual picture of them? Oh, yeah. And you can see him covering his woman. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, and yeah. And what's the Bible saying? Or what are you uh, So, um, this is my grandmother's, my nana saying that she always used to say after everything, when you ask her how she's doing, she always used to say, I'm blessed by the best. And so I was just like, blessed by the best, blessed by the best. Exactly. Why? And I, it started to, to, to resonate with me, mm -hmm. even when, you know, everybody started asking, hey, how are you doing? And I, people would think I have an old spirit because I was like, yeah, I'm blessed by the best. And I'm like, and they'll be like, what, 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 <laughs> you know? So um, it's just a, 
a saying that that she always used to say, and you know, I I feel like I have to say it every time because you know we are blessed by the we are we are. And so that's what they prompted me. I lost my mom um, January 11, 2018. I lost my dad January 26. So 15 days apart. Neither one of them took a single pill. Neither one of them was. That was love. It was, uh, yes, he died. Yes, he died because he couldn't live without her. That, it just spiraled. You know, it spiraled me. And I had... um, I don't know. I had this thing with me and God. We weren't, we weren't seeing eye to eye on that, you know. And I, I went through a, a, I'm not gonna call it depression. It was just a difficult time. Emotional, emotional, difficult time yeah. for years. I still deal yeah. with it. Yeah. But in that, during that time when I put myself in isolation, is when He brought me back. And you mad at me for this, but remember, remember. Yeah. And so that's when I wrote the book. It was like me healing. And I could see things so vividly. And I could see my parents again. And we just walked through that whole thing together. Right. And it and it was a healing process. And it takes time. It does. Yeah. No one cannot tell you when to heal. Because That's I right. remember when I lost my grandson, he would have been 22 this year. And I know mm-hmm. if he was still in I don't even think I'd have been in this country. Because mm-hmm. he was a one boy, my only grandson. I've got two granddaughters. And I wanted that boy so badly. Mm-hmm. And then when God took him, because this is also six months, it was like, why did you do that? Mm. It felt like yeah. a punishment yeah. on myself. And he was born with a, the, um, the hair lip when yeah. he separated. Uh-huh. But he didn't die. When God took him, he'd already had the lip closed, everything. And, he put, and God had to say, I didn't take him when he was broken. Mm. I took him when he was whole. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that gave me comfort later mm-hmm. on. So, but it takes time, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, so no one. I mean, 2018. That's just like the other day. It is. Yeah. Still. You know, I mean, it's not something you're gonna get over. My mom, it's her birthday on Monday, mm-hmm. and she died two years, and I couldn't even go home. Yeah. And so I still feel it, but I'm gonna share a, a post on Monday of something that I did in my house and I saw my mom yeah. telling me that it was going to be okay. Yeah. So you know what, I know you've got tears in your eyes, but it's going to be okay. Yeah. Because you know, she's watching your son, yeah. she's watching over you, yeah. and she's watching over serenity. Mm-hmm. She's got all three yeah. of you mm-hmm. in her hands. So you, it's not, you know I mean, don't ever look at, she's not here, look at it as a joy. Yeah. Because one day you will see her again. Oh, yeah. We don't know when. Mm-hmm. But all of us has got a destination. But we don't know when we're on that ladder. Right. We don't know when God is going to say, today is our day. And so that's why I do my best to live my life the best I can. Doing things for other people. Because I don't want to wake up and I know I didn't do the no room. I want to see my mom. I want to see my grandson. I want to see my, my daughter that I lost. And family members, thank you, Jimmy. So I want to see all that again, you know what I'm saying? Yes. So you're okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, your mom might not be here, but it's okay. You see, they stuffed all the box so that usually they put you short, right? <laughs> when you say, you say they stuffed the box. <laughs> They're giving you the COVID, Jimmy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because I know people are going to be the that. When you go back mm-hmm. next year, that box mm-hmm. is going to be all mm-hmm. empty. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> because they're going to stop you like that next there. year with all the right. recession. That's right. That's right. It's stuff there. Yeah. It's stuff you know, said. Uh, took it. Surprise me. Mm-hmm. Did yeah, it surprise right. me as mm-hmm. well? I'm thinking, uh, this must be a COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I'm funny. sorry. You're <laughs> What well, I just like to make yeah. people laugh. You know, yeah. people look at me and they see me. I'm going to ask you one question. No, I'm not. I'm going to ask you one question. Do <laughs> you know that is, is that your brand? That's, that's my nickname. Uno. Yeah, that's my nickname. Okay, you're not the game. That the no, no, okay, no, no, no. Okay, I wasn't no, sure. No, 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 no. <laughs> I thought we had another, 
another um, part of your branding. Oh no, that's um, so I have Revive Minds. This is an old, old shirt, but I have you know one eight hundred Revive Your Mind. Um, so it, it's this is like a, a mechanic shirt, basically. It's a mechanic shirt. But oh, is that what you do? No. Okay. No, 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 oh, no, no. I, I, you have to. I, sometimes you have to bear with me because mm -hmm. when you say mechanic, I'm thinking about car mechanic, because I'm thinking, yeah, I've got a car mechanic. I don't know where to go. No, no. So uh, when you it's, say it's basically, um, I basically uh, put this shirt out, and I have um, uh, other shirts that came out and saying, you know, don't let your mind break down. Call us first. So this is where oh, wow. the the tow truck, mm -hmm. the the tow truck, and it's. It's a, a, a picture of like a tow truck and then the mind and everything like is that. Is that part of your, so is that a business is that you, is that your own business? No, it just falls under my brand. All right. Yes, yes. So, uh, so it's a, like a little, little logo. So do a lot of tow truck people or people buy your logo or? No, that's no. that's different. He's just saying it's, a, it's like a slogan. It says, don't mm -hmm. let your mind break down. Mm -hmm. Call us first, so it's mm -hmm. your mind. Don't let your mind break down. Right. Yeah, but but I, yeah, but for I was thinking there would be a phone number or something. Oh, I do have a phone number. Uh, so it's going to be 837-RVMINDS. Um, um, mm -hmm. um, so it's 837 uh, 786 Four six three seven. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why was, when he said about call. That's right. Because yeah. if somebody's breaking down, mm -hmm. is there somebody that they can call? Right. Yeah. He's still that's getting that in the works. But yes, okay. Yes, so that's what I was asking. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm getting a hotline together. Um, I'm just. Ooh. I'm getting a hotline together. I'm doing my best. Uh, with uh, that help with mental health. Uh, that help with you know the gun safety. Um, so. That, that's in the works. Felicia, I don't know if you, you're watching because she came on here because she lost her son and you know I mean she does a lot of um, talking to um, police and people about gun safety and whatever mm -hmm. because to me right now there's so many gun problems that's going on. Mm -hmm. I think it's even worse mm -hmm. than ever before mm -hmm. because you can get a gun. She was when she came out, she said, you can go into the schools now and buy a gun for $25. Mm -hmm. And that's not good to know yeah. that you can go into a school and buy a gun. And now, now they're doing the clear backpacks for the kids mm -hmm. and whatnot. But what about if they... There's, there's always going to be a loophole getting around somewhere. Right. Yeah. And that's what I wanted to bring awareness. How do we stop our youth from going around hurting other children, hurting themselves. Because the world is so broken, so I'm glad that you was talking about your mental health yeah. and that you wanted to do something different because that's where it's breaking down in the mentally. It's, it's, it's going back to your, your mind. mind. Yeah. Yes. And, and that's another thing when um, I want, I'm getting into the mental health um, uh, I guess you could call it uh, organization or arena as mm -hmm. well. Mine will be more geared towards self-discipline, though. Um, I think that 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 controls a lot of it because if you have discipline, because we're all going to get angry about yeah. something, we're all going to feel like um, we're you know being mistreated or something isn't fair. But when you learn to control that, I had to learn how to control that. I used to be a hothead. So, but now, I'm so different from that now, but it's a mind thing, you know, and you have to want to. And so, and sometimes you don't see, you see that as being cowardly when you walk away from situations and things right. like that. But you're actually, you're actually victorious, way more mm -hmm. victorious than you would be if you reacted. That's right. And that's another thing that I talk about in the book. I don't feel as though, I, I know that had God not known that I was going to not react when I found out what happened, if there was any inkling in my heart that I would have taken revenge on that family, yeah. I don't think my son would have been saved. But I, I know that he saw in my heart how I would treat the situation, and he saved it.
And I think it's for me also to help people to understand that. Because we can say whatever it is that we yeah. want to say. Yeah. God knows our hearts. That's right. And once your heart is good, you'll see that a lot of good will come behind that. And that's right, because like, for me, 11 years old, what is it, the guy that shot you, was he this viewer and was the same age? No, no. Uh, he was an adult. He was an adult. He was 18. I only met him for 24 hours. He was a friend of the family's. There for the holidays. <clears throat> That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a jealousy kind of thing. Something must have triggered him. I think he just had mental problems because yeah. they they had just. I mean, he probably spent all together 30 minutes with this guy from the time mm -hmm. he met him to when he shot him. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Something must have triggered him. For him to do some, for mm -hmm. someone to do something, yeah. something is always a trigger, and it might, like you said, it was around the holiday period. Maybe the holiday period, he didn't like that time of the year mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. something might have happened to mm -hmm. him around that time. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And seeing right. that family dynamics, it might not be something because not everybody looks at Christmas as a holiday, as a happy time. Mm -hmm. yes. That's right. Mm -hmm. So just because we might have a Christmas tree and things look beautiful in the house, maybe that guy did not see that. Maybe he was abused at Christmas time. You just don't know what mm -hmm. triggers people to do what they did. And I think if you go and ask him now, why did you do it, he'll probably tell you I don't even know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? He'll probably say I don't even know. The biggest thing for me, I think, out of that and whenever I talk about him which is very seldom um, he's never asked for forgiveness that's why I, I know that he's still in turmoil he's still dealing with some things he has to be because he's never act, he's never come to Christian and, and even said that he was sorry so I think that once that healing takes place within him because this one is pretty okay, but I think that for his own healing, that would be something that I would love to see. Yeah. Well, what about for your healing? Um, I got my baby. I think I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, that's why I was thinking maybe just maybe he can't because he, you know, sometimes you go through something and it's like you're in a fog. Mm -hmm. And he's probably still in a fog. He probably might even be in prison. Or we may know. We don't know, right? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This was the, the, the only encounter that I, that I had with him. Yeah, and I didn't research him. Here recently we had a, um, another uh, Christian was filming, um, he was filming a, a documentary, a, a documentary yeah. and he was going over what happened that day. And he just kept, and he asked me to review the documentary, so I'm going back and he's showing me things that I didn't even know. Right about the incident, showing me, showing how, how he when he shot him, he kept putting, trying to put the gun back in his hand because the, the whole thing was he wanted to say that he shot himself, right? And um, I guess he, I, so Christian couldn't function because of course he had yeah. been shot in the head, and that was just one of those things that just I just kept watching and I almost couldn't get over it. And my editor asked, she said, "Well, where is this guy now?" I said, oh no, don't get me digging. Because I'm strong enough, I, we, we're past that, but I don't know. You know, you don't want those feelings to come back. You, yeah, you don't want those feelings to come back. I, I don't want to be vengeful. I don't want those things in my mind and in my heart. So we don't know where he is and we don't go seek him. I don't, I don't go out looking for trouble. Hopefully trouble won't find me. Right. Well, you, your son didn't go out looking for trouble, but you yeah. trouble find. You see right. what I'm saying? That's right. Well, you know what, Christian, I'm going to be honest with you. You, sub you survived for a reason. Yeah. Your calling hasn't even started yet. Right. Yeah. You're just at the tip of the iceberg. Right. I can see you not just be going to schools and talking to people. I can see you're going to be doing a lot more. So I'm not going to tell you, you better start getting ready because I'm just telling you what God is telling me. Yes. You haven't seen nothing yet. Yes. Your brand hasn't even gone nowhere yet. 
there's people the higher up is going to be taking your brand. You just make sure you put everything in a row. Because when God is ready, he's going to use you in a way that you didn't even know and you didn't even expect him to use you. And I'm just telling you what is being told to me. You're going to be going far with the brand. Because it's all about the mind and that's what God has always said. You know what I mean? And from you've got ears, let you hear what people are saying to you. And from you come on the show, everything I want to talk about is the mind, the mind, the mind. Don't ask me why, but I just feel that you're going to go far in everything that you've got planned. Someone said to me once, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. And this was nine years ago. Mm -hmm. This woman told me this. She says, Barry, you're going to go far. And I never thought I would be where I am today. It's, te it's everything has a time, everything is a process. Mm -hmm. And you went through part of your process, and that process is going to take you to a bigger, it's like baking a cake, mm -hmm. and you're only just starting. But trust me, you're going to go far. So I'm going to ask both of you one last question. What does W the height mean to you, Bob? Well, I think for me, it's, it's self-explanatory. Like, you cannot go into anything thinking it's what it appears to be, you know, and, and life is what you make it. People can say and people can display all different types of things, but whatever it is that's for you is for you, and you can't believe the naysayers or the, the, the haters, as they call them, right. just trust in God. That's and, right. Yep, yeah, just trust in God. I would say, um, I don't believe the hype means to me is what piggybacking off what she said, um, just have a, um, a one-track mind. Don't believe everything you read or don't believe everything you see. Um, in my case, I was listening to everybody, you know, saying don't do this, don't do that, but I just stayed focused. And when I stayed focused on, on my purpose, mm -hmm. then that's when things started to open up for me. So don't believe the hype, you know, I wanted to, to say that, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's a, uh, a, a phrase that, you know, it, it's, it's what you make it, it's what you make it, mm -hmm. and um, if you believe in the hype, then, you know, your life can go a different, completely different way. So just don't believe the hype, stick to your purpose, stick to your path. That God has for you. That's right. You know what he said? Stick to your purpose. Stick to the path that God has got for you. So that's why our show is called Don't Believe the Hype. Because too many times people will, I'm sure even when you was doing your t-shirts and your things, people were saying to you, no, nah, you don't want to do that. Everybody's doing right. that. You know what I mean? No one's not going to do buy your t-shirt. No one's mm -hmm. not going to buy your hat. And when I was showing Janice your little video that you sent me. Mm -hmm. And I said, what I saw was the brain. The paper looks like. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We That's did what that intentionally, yeah. we did yeah. that intentionally, okay. yeah. That's what I, I saw, I didn't mm -hmm. see the hat. I said, you mean I'm seeing a brain here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then she says, oh yeah, I can see, but that's what I saw. Right. Mm -hmm. Because it's all. In the mind. Right. It's yeah. all in the mm -hmm. mind. Right. And I said, look at him, he's even got the picture of me. <laughs> <laughs> we did that intentionally. You know what I mean? So I, that's what I saw. But most people probably just see the hat and not see exactly. the concept of what your right. hat means. Right. You know what I mean? So that's, so I'm glad I, I spotted something that most people ain't going to see because people are too busy tearing the paper. Exactly. Exactly. It's about the small things. Yeah. The minor details. Yeah, the mm -hmm. minor details. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying for you. Make sure you line up all your minor details because those minor details are going to become big details. So once again, I would like to thank you all for tuning in to our Don't Believe the Hype show. I'm Valerie Kelso, Shirley Ina, and Christian. And please come out and support 
why we do what we do here at the Purple Light Touch Foundation. We do what we do because at the end of the day, no matter who you are, men, women, boy, girl, everybody needs somebody. There's nobody in this world right now that's on an island. We're all going through something. So let's support each other. Reach one, touch one. We will see you back in probably two, three weeks. And you all have a wonderful and blessed holiday. Because I think there's a holiday coming up. Some holiday, I know it is because over here you have all these holidays. <laughs> anyway, talk to you all soon. Bye and have a wonderful and blessed week. Mm -hmm.